Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course on the principles of CDMA, MIMO, OFDM wireless communication systems. So, in the previous module, we have seen various aspects of MIMO communication systems, the properties, the behavior and the various transmission schemes and the analysis related to MIMO communication systems. Let us now in this module start with a new technology that is OFDM. So, what we are going to look at in this module is that is starting with this module is introduction to a new technology and in fact, a very prominent and a very key technology that is OFDM which stands for orthogonal frequency orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So, we are going to start with OFDM which stands for orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and this is a key standard because OFDM is employed in 4G wireless system. So, this is a key technology which is employed in 4G wireless that is the fourth generation wireless systems such as if we look at for instance LTE, LTE this is a 4G cellular standard, this is a fourth generation cellular standard and this stands for long term, long term evolution, correct? We have already seen this. Another 4G or 3.75G standard is WiMAX as we have seen this stands for world wide interoperability. for microwave access that is worldwide interoperability for microwave access. So, we have LTE which is long term evolution which is a 4G cellular standard and another competing standard which is WiMAX worldwide interoperability for microwave access. Both of these are based on these are dominant standards and both of these are based on OFDM. So, if we look at the cellular world both of these are based on OFDM. Similarly, LTE advanced that is denoted by LTE A. So, if we look at LTE A that is LTE advanced which stands for LTE advanced. this is also based on OFDM which is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So, OFDM what is the important aspect of OFDM? OFDM is a key broadband wireless technology. So, this is a key wireless and we can emphasize broadband. key wireless broadband technology and by broadband we mean a system basically a wireless system which has a large bandwidth. So, this wireless system supports a large So, what are we looking at? We are looking at OFDM which is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing which is a key wireless technology and not just that it is a broadband technology. So, it operates on a huge bandwidth, it operates on a large or a very wide bandwidth. For instance, if you look at a GSM system, a GSM system has a bandwidth of about 200 kilohertz, but an OFDM system can have a bandwidth up to 20 megahertz, right. So, this is several times 
that of for instance is about 100 times that of a GSM system. So, it operates over a large bandwidth, it is a broadband system. Since it has a large bandwidth, therefore, naturally the data rate is higher and these high data rates are used in 3G and 4G. In fact, 4G wireless systems to enable data rates up to 100s or even more than 100 megabit per second about 500 megabit per second or even up to 1 gigabit per second. So, LTE and LTE advanced which are based on OFDM and operate thereby our broadband wireless cellular system can support can uh, can enable a very high data rate of the order of hundreds of megabits per second. This is possible because of OFDM which stands for orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and not simply cellular standards, but if we look at Wi-Fi or wireless LAN standards. So, several Wi-Fi Wi-Fi or wireless LAN that is wireless local area network standards. So, these are wireless So, Wi-Fi or wireless local area WLAN wireless local area network standards. So, these WLAN standards, what are the various WLAN standards? For instance, 802.11a, 802.11g, 802.11n and the more recent 802.11ac. If you look at all of these, these are the various IEEE WLAN standards. So, these are IEEE WLAN standards and these are based on these enable high data rates because these are based on OFDM or orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So, several wireless LAN standards such as 802.11g, 802.11a, 802.11n, 802.11ac, which are the Wi-Fi standards. Colloquially, these are, these are known as Wi-Fi standards, where technically these are wireless LAN, wireless local area network standards. These are also based on OFDM. So, OFDM is a key wireless technology which is used in several cellular, 4G cellular and several wireless LAN standards because it is a broadband wireless technology which enables high data rates. At the same time, it has, it is practically, it has a low complexity of implementation. It implements, it enables easy implementation of these broadband wireless communication systems. So, let us look at the basic principle of OFDM. So, what is the basic principle behind OFDM? And the basic principle behind OFDM can be explained as follows. The basic principle of OFDM can be explained as follows. For instance, if you look at a typical communication system, a communication system as you all know has a certain bandwidth which is B. I have a communication system over a bandwidth which is B and I have a single carrier. I have a carrier. So, in a communication system I have a bandwidth and I have a carrier, a single carrier placed at the center of the bandwidth at the carrier frequency, correct. So, let us say this is our carrier frequency. I have a single carrier. Let us take a simple example. Let us say my bandwidth is 10 megahertz. So, this is a broadband system. So, this is this is a broadband system of bandwidth 10 megahertz. Now, therefore, if you are performing communication, the communication system that is implemented over this bandwidth has a symbol time t is equal to 1 over the bandwidth b and 1 over the bandwidth b, we know bandwidth b is 10 megahertz. So, this is 1 over 10 megahertz, which is basically 1 over 
10 into 10 to the power of 6 hertz, which is 0 0.1 into 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds equals 0 0.1 microseconds. So, therefore, we have a symbol time that is what we are saying is we are considering a communication system which has a bandwidth of 10 megahertz. In this bandwidth B which is 10 megahertz, the symbol time is T equals 1 over B. Therefore, the symbol time is 1 over 10 megahertz which is 0 0.1 microsecond right so so what we are saying is for communication over this bandwidth of 10 megahertz the symbol time is 0 0.1 microseconds however you might re remember from the initial modules that is the delay spread if we look at a typical outdoor channel the delay spread of the wireless channel is approximately 2 to 3 microseconds that is 2 to 3 microseconds. So, if I look at T d where T d is my delay spread T d is approximately of the order of 2 to 3 microseconds, which means now if I look at the relation between this symbol time. Now, let us look at this our symbol time is 0 0.1 microseconds, our delay spread is approximately let us say 2 microseconds. Therefore, the symbol time t is much less than what we are observing is the symbol time t is much less than the delay spread the symbol time. the symbol time t is much less than the delay spread. What we are observing is the symbol time is 0 0.1 microsecond, the delay spread is 2 micro about 2 microsecond. So, the delay spread is about 20 times larger than the symbol time correct, which means now you might also remember from the characteristics of the wireless channel that when the delay spread is larger than the symbol time we have inter symbol interference. So, this what does this lead to? This leads to a problem. What is the problem? This leads to ISI or inter what is also known as inter So, what we are observing is as the bandwidth B increases as as bandwidth B increases what happens is our symbol time one over B symbol time one over B decreases correct. And therefore, as the bandwidth of the system becomes more and more broadband that is the bandwidth B is increasing is becoming larger and larger the symbol time one over B is becoming smaller and smaller. Now, since the symbol time is becoming smaller, it is going to become lower than the delay spread of the channel. Once it is lower than the delay spread of the channel, this results in inter symbol interference. And when you have interference, this leads to a degradation or this leads to a loss of performance of the wireless communication system. So, the inter symbol interference resulting in a broadband wireless communication system leads to a performance loss, leads to a degradation of the performance and therefore, this is a significant challenge, this is a significant problem and addressing this problem, addressing this problem of inter symbol interference is a significant challenge in a broadband wireless communication system. So, this leads to inter symbol interference, leads to ISI as we said ISI stands for inter symbol interference and this is a significant challenge, significant challenge in a broadband
this is a significant challenge in a this is a significant challenge in a broadband this is a significant challenge in a broadband wireless system so how to overcome isi so our main problem is to overcome the inter symbol interference what is the challenge the challenge is to overcome the inter symbol interference the challenge is basically because of this small symbol time that is as the bandwidth is increasing the symbol time 1 over b is decreasing which is leading to inter symbol interference the challenge is to overcome this inter symbol interference and what is the principle what is the what is the method or the means to overcome this inter symbol interference and the scheme is simple how to overcome the inter symbol interference so and the principle to overcome that is to avoid inter symbol interference realize that the inter symbol interference is arising in the first place because of the large bandwidth so what we do is when we have a large bandwidth instead of using the entire bandwidth at once what we do is we use it piecemeal what we do is we take this large bandwidth b and we split it into smaller bands or we split it into what are known as we split it into what are known as sub band so i have a large bandwidth which i said is 10 megahertz i am splitting this into smaller bands so i am splitting this into each smaller bands which are termed as sub band so previously we had a single carrier now we will have multiple carriers one in each sub band this is termed as a sub carrier so we will have smaller sub bands in each sub band place a sub place a sub carrier now if you look at this if i let's say have n sub bands i am saying smaller sub bands let's say n right then bandwidth of each sub band is equal to is equal to b by n correct so what we are doing is we are taking a large bandwidth b we are dividing it into n sub band so the bandwidth of each sub band is b by n let us take a simple example for example b equals let's say 10 megahertz and n equals thousand what is n n equals n is n is basically equal to the number of the number of sub bands is equal to thousand then the bandwidth per sub band of each sub band bandwidth of each sub band is equal to b by n which is equal to 10 megahertz divided by uh, sorry bandwidth of each sub band is b by n which is 10 megahertz divided by 1000 which is equal which is equal to 10 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by 10 to the power of 3 which is equal to 10 into 10 to the power of 3 which is equal to 10 
kilohertz. So, the bandwidth of each sub band is equal to. So, bandwidth of each sub band. So, we are taking a bandwidth B of 1000 of uh, 10 megahertz. We are dividing it into 1000 sub bands. Bandwidth of each sub band is 10 megahertz divided by 1000 that is 10 kilohertz. Now, if you look at the symbol time in each sub band. Now, therefore, symbol time in each sub band is equal to the symbol time is 1 over b over n is equal to n over b. That is in our example symbol time t becomes 1 over 10 megahertz divided by 1000 that is basically as we have seen 1 over 10 kilohertz which is equal to 1 over 10 into 10 power 3 which is basically 0 0.1 millisecond which is equal to 100 microsecond. Now, if you look at this 100 microsecond, now if you look at this new symbol time which is 100 microsecond. So, now let us look at this new symbol time which is 100 microsecond and compare this now again with the delay spread which is 2 microsecond and now you can see that T is much greater than the delay spread that is we have 100 microseconds is much greater than 2 microsecond that is new symbol time the new symbol time is much greater than and therefore now what we are seeing is basically the new symbol time is 1 over b by n that is 1 over the bandwidth of each sub carrier and the bandwidth of each sub carrier is 10 kilohertz. So, the new symbol time is 1 over 10 kilohertz which is 0 0.1 millisecond or 100 microseconds and the delay spread is 2 microseconds. So, the new symbol time which is 100 microsecond is significantly greater than the delay spread therefore, there is no inter symbol interference in this system where you are using multiple sub bands and multiple sub carriers. Therefore, the usage of these multiple sub bands, uh, sub -bands and sub carriers therefore, this means there is no ISI in new system in the new system with multiple sub bands and sub carrier in each band. Sub carrier in each band such a system with multiple. So, such a system with multiple sub bands and a sub carrier in each band. So, what are we doing? We are taking bandwidth B dividing into n sub bands in each sub band there is a sub carrier. So, there are n sub carriers such a system with multiple sub bands and multiple sub carriers is termed as a multi carrier system. So, such a system with multiple sub bands and multiple sub carriers is termed as a multi carrier modulated multi carrier modulated modulated system. So, this is known as an MCM system which is basically a precursor 
for OFDM. So, what we are seeing here is that we have a multiple sub carriers, we have multiple sub bands and in each sub band we have a sub carrier therefore, we have multiple sub carriers and we are modulating these multiple sub carriers such a system is known as a multi, multi carrier or multiple carrier modulated system that is an MCM system and this is the basis for OFDM, this is a precursor or basis for OFDM. This is not exactly OFDM, this is a basis for OFDM. So, what is OFDM? OFDM is basically a multi carrier, multi carrier modulated system that is where we have multiple sub bands and multiple sub carriers, each sub carrier representing a small sub band and since the bandwidth of each sub band is small, therefore, the symbol time is large, once the symbol time is large, the symbol time is larger than the delay spread, therefore, there is no inter symbol interference or negligible inter symbol interference in each sub band and this enables transmission, this enables smooth transmission and smooth reception in a broadband wireless communication system. So, that is the principle behind MCM which forms a basis of OFDM that is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and we are going to explore this idea in, gra in greater detail in the subsequent modules. Thank you very much.